Good afternoon and welcome to today's class. Today we will discuss number systems as part of our curriculum. Um, in today's class we will be discussing on uh, four different number systems. That is decimal, octal, hexadecimal and binary number systems. As you can see in this chart here, uh, we as humans we usually use the decimal number systems in our, in our, in our, in our usual lives. Uh, however, uh, we use binary number systems in computers. That is because computers are electrical machines and we can represent electrical signals um, in either 0 or 1. Okay? Um, now, the point is uh, when we have a number that is represented in, a, in one number system, so let us say if we have a number that is represented in a decimal number system, we can convert that number into another number system. Uh, but the only constraint is that we have to keep the value of the number same. Okay. So while we are converting the number, the value of the number should not change. The number will change. However, the value of the number shall not change. Uh, so for there are a few examples here. Uh, if we have a 0 in, in decimal, we can represent 0 with a 0 in binary. We can represent the 0 of decimal in uh, with 0 of hexadecimal and we can represent the same zero of decimal with a zero in octal. Okay. However, uh, with when we have a uh, we when we have two in decimal, we have to represent represent the same value in binary, but we have to represent that number in in a in a way that the the value of the number will not change. So, for number two, as you will see here, it's represented with a one and a zero. Okay. So that's two. And then we, as we go along, you will see that uh, we, if we have, let's say, seven, we have uh, uh, the binary, the binary conversion of the of, se of seven uh, is one one one. And then because octal also has a digit seven, so that digit seven represents the same yes. same value in in octal. Okay. However, if we move along further because there are, there are no more digits in octal greater than 7 okay we have and we have to represent decimal 8 into octal okay uh, we'll have a 1 and a 0 in octal okay so the point is when we when whenever we are writing a number we have to sh we have to also provide uh, its base so while usually we use decimal in case of this subject or particularly if there are questions related to uh, number systems, you will not only get a number, but also you will get a, get its base. Okay. So the number will have a base written in written subscript. Uh, so that is how you will know uh, that the number is either a decimal or a binary or octal or hexadecimal. Okay. So uh, uh, we will be uh, doing some conversions that will be uh, we'll see some conversions that uh, that's from decimal to binary, decimal to octal, and de decimal to hexadecimal, and then we'll also see how to get these numbers back into the decimal system, and then we'll also see how we convert uh, an octal number into a binary number without converting into a decimal number, and then so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, so as I said earlier. Uh, you can have a number written in one number system and then when you convert that number into another system, you have to make sure that the value of the number in the new number system remains the same. So for example, we here we have uh, 25 of base 10 because we, we can see here that, that there is a 10 written in subscript beside the number. Okay. When you convert 25 into binary, you will get this particular number that is 110011 and how we know it is a binary we know we can see here that the 2 is written in subscript here and then 8 is written sub in subscript with this number that is how we know it is a it is an octal number. Okay. Now one thing that we need to understand is that um, Whichever number system we use, uh, we can represent the, digit, the value of their digits in terms of their bases. Okay. 
so for example in this case if we have 125 of base 10 okay we can represent each digit in terms uh, of the powers of its base okay so we have we have one here and we, this one has a power of its base that's how much power does it have two uh, two okay so we have a one that's on hundredth place and so the ba the power of of the base is two in, in this in this place okay and then we have two and then if we if we want to represent this digit in in terms of its base okay and then we have five that we can okay so these will result in let's say 100 and and when we sum all of these values you will get a 100 125 okay we'll get the same value and we will and no matter which base no matter whichever base we use if we if we apply this process uh, we will get a decimal number okay so that's we will see in the upcoming slides so in case of binary in case of binary to decimal conversion what we will do is that in case of binary to decimal conversion what we will do is that we will take the binary and digits of binary number and we will uh, multiply each digit of binary number with a with the with the power of its base okay so what we will do if let's say we have if let's say we have a four digit number if let's say we have a four digit binary number if let's say we have a four digit binary number uh, we can take each uh, we can we can take each digit in in terms of its uh, in terms of power of its base so the one over here is let's say uh, a unit digit and then we have a tens digit and then we have a hundreds digit and then we have a thousands digit okay so we are common with this terminology uh, what it means is that we will multiply this one with base to the power zero and then we multiply this with the base to the base uh, base to the power one and then two and then three okay so what's the base here base two okay so because we are converting a binary number into a decimal number we we'll, we we'll multiply each digit each each digit with the power of 2 okay so here for this one we have 2 to the power how much 3 3 okay and then we have a 0 we'll multiply with the 2 to the power 2 2 we have again a 0 and then we multiply it with 2 to the power 1 and then again we have 1 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 0 okay so as a result of this process what we will get is a decimal number that will have the similar value but it will not look the same okay that's because we are using a decimal number so 2 to the power 3 is how much 8 8, eight multiplied by 1 eight. is 8 and then 2 to the power 4 is so 2 to the power 2 is 2 to the power 2 to the power 2 is 4 2 to the power 1 is oh sorry sorry it's also multiplied by 0 so it's 0 2 to the power 1 that's 2 and multiplied by 0 it's 0 and then 2 to the power 0 2 to the power 0 is 1 2 to the power 0 is 1 and then multiplied by 1 it's also 1 okay so when we when we sum all of these values you will get 9 and that will be in base 10 so for the next two conversions that's from octal to decimal and from hexadecimal to decimal we'll use the same process uh, the only difference will be the base value okay so for because we are converting 
a binary number into a decimal number, uh, we are multiplying each digit with the power of 2. For octal, for octal numbers, we will we'll multiply each digit with the powers of 8. And then for hexadecimal values, hexadecimal numbers, we will we'll multiply each digit with the powers of 16. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so can this number be can this can this number also be an octal number? Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay. So in case of octal number what we'll do we'll take uh, each digit of this number and then we'll apply the same technique that's multiplying each digit with the base uh, powers of its base. So we'll take 1 and then we'll multiply it 8 to the power 3 and then we'll take 0 and we'll multiply it with uh, 8 to the power 2 and then we'll take 0 multiply it with 8 to the power 1 and then we'll multiply it by, uh, multiply 1 with 8 to the power 0 okay I'm trying to say something it's being recorded okay 8 to the power 3 8 cube is how much one two. Five one two. Yes, sir. It's sixteen. Uh, Five point two. Eight to the power two is uh, it's a sixty four. Sixty four multiplied by zero is zero, and then we have eight to the power one. That's eight uh, multiplied with zero is zero, and then we have eight to the power zero. Okay, so eight eight to the power zero is one, and when we multiply one with one, we get one, and then when we sum these values, we'll get five hundred and thirteen. Okay, so the value of the uh, the value will remain the same. Only the number will change. That's because we are uh, also one thing that you'll notice is that we have a three-digit number here. And then we have a four-digit number here. That's because um, eight has a smaller base, and in order to represent the same value, it has to it has to represent the same value with more digits as compared to decimal numbers. Okay, as you will see here, uh, the number over here is 724 um, of base eight. Okay, and then as you will see here, we have uh, we have multiplied each digit with the powers of their base. So, for example, we have four in in place of units. Uh, so, in place of units, we have power. The power in uh, in place of units is how much? Zero. zero. Okay, so we'll multiply four with eight to the power zero, and then we'll multiply because uh, two is in tens place. We'll multiply two with eight to the power. One and then because seven is in place of in in hundreds place, we will multiply seven with eight to the power two, and then in the end what we'll do is sum all of these three values. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir, uh, uh, when we are converting the binary into decimal, uh, we multiply uh, the number with uh, power powers two, of two. Power two, three, two, 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 and and when it comes to octal, we use eight. We'll so use it. Why we didn't use ten? No, we'll uh, we'll become because well, uh, when we have a decimal number, and we'll we have to convert the a decimal number into a binary number, we we take an LCM with two. So because we are when we are going to binary, because we divide divide with two, okay, on our way back we'll multiply it with powers of two. Okay, so we'll do that in in, in the upcoming slides. Okay. In case of a hexadecimal number, the the basic the basic process will remain the same. Okay, as I said earlier, when we are uh, from from hexadecimal, octal, and binary, when we are go going from these three numbers to decimal, we will multiply each digit with the powers of their base. Okay, so if we have if we have binary number, we'll we'll multiply each digit with the power of twos. 
in case of octal number as we have seen here, we will multiply each digit with the powers of 8 and if we have a base 16 number, we will multiply each digit with the powers of 16. Okay. Okay. So let's say if the if 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 one zero zero one is a base sixteen number. Okay. And if we have, if we want to multiply this base sixteen number, if we want to multiply this base sixteen number, if we want to convert this base sixteen number into a decimal number, we'll have to multiply each digit with the powers of sixteen. So. This one is 4096. Zero. 16 multiplied by 16 is how much? 16 multiplied by? Multiplied by, not 256. 256 multiplied by 0 is zero. 0. And then 16 multiplied by 0 is also 0. And 16 power 0 is 1, which is when multiplied by 1 is 1. So we have 4,000. 97, 4097. Yes, so if we have 1001 in hexadecimal system, uh, the equivalent binary value is, sorry, equivalent decimal value is 4097. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So here's the technique. Basically, it says the same thing. Multiply each bit, that's each digit, with the, uh, with the power of 16 where n is the weight of the bit or let's say the place of the bit. So we have a units place or unit bit where we have power 0 and then we have a bit or a digit on tens place where we have power 1 and then we have a digit, we have a bit on hundreds place where we have power 2 and then we have a bit on thousands place that's where we have 3. Okay. So in the, you, we have to multiply all these values and then in the end we have to add the result and that will give us, give us the decimal equivalent uh, of the hexadecimal number. So here's an example. Uh, here in this case what we have is that we have three digit hexadecimal number that's A, B, C of B16. Okay, how do we know that it's B16 number? As you can see here we have B16, uh, we have 16 written in subscript. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and then what we do is that we <coughs> multiply C with 16 to the power 0, B with 16 multiplied by 16 to the power 1, and then A with 16, 16 raised to the power 2. Okay. And then because these are alphabets, we represent, uh, also we know that uh, A represents, in hexadecimal system, A represents uh, the, decimal, the decimal value of 10. Okay. So what we do is we write 10 and then we multiply, multiply it with 16 raised to the power 2. Uh, we know that B in decimal system is, is represented with 11. So we multiply 11 with 16 to the power 1. And then because C, as we know, uh, is represented by uh, value uh, number 12 in decimal system, we multiply by 12 with 16 raised to the power 0, which is 1. And then in the end, we sum up all these values to get a decimal equivalent okay now what do what do we have we have we are going to convert we are going to take a decimal number and then we are going to convert it into a binary, binary number uh, so what do we do with binary uh, what did we do when we are converting uh, a binary number into a decimal number we are trying to multiply each digit with the powers of its base okay uh, now what we'll do is we'll divide with the powers of its space. Okay, so if we are, if we have a decimal number, we want to convert it into binary number. We will start dividing that uh, decimal number with two. Okay, in case of if we want to convert a decimal number into an octal number, we will convert it into we we'll convert it using by dividing a decimal number with eight. And then if we have a decimal number, we want to convert it into a hexadecimal number. We will convert, uh, we will divide the decimal number with 16. 
Okay, so we'll basically be taking LCM. Okay. Okay. So we are going to small. Uh, we are going to take small number. So let's say we are going to take a. Let's say we take thirty-seven. Okay. We have uh, we have a decimal number that's thirty-seven, yeah. and we want to uh, convert the same number into a binary, binary number. Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do is that because we are going towards binary number and away from decimal number, we'll, divide, we'll take an LCM of the decimal number by the base, okay? So, fourteen now. 2 multiplied by 18 is 36, okay? So, so what we are doing here is that we are we are we are dividing two uh, we are dividing 37 by two, and then what we'll get is that we'll get two byproducts. One of them is uh, one of them is coefficient, and the other one is remainder. So whenever whenever you are dividing, or whenever you are uh, we are you are doing an integer division, in which you have a numerator and the denominator both integers, you you have four different values involved. Okay, so one of them is the numerator, the denominator, or divisor, and the dividend, and then uh, the other two products, are, other two values are remainder and coefficient. So in this case, uh, we are dividing 37 with two, and then we are getting two two other values. That's uh, a coefficient and a remainder, and what we are interested in is remainders. Okay, remainders will determine the number. Okay. So uh, when we divide 37 by 2, you will get 18 as a coefficient and 1 as a remainder. That's because if you multiply these, two, multiply these two values and add this value, you will get this number. Okay. Uh, also, if you will divide uh, 18 by 2, you will get 9 and then we will also get the remainder 0. Okay. When we divide 9 by 2, we will get 4 and then we will get 1 remainder 2. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, we cannot go beyond this. Uh, we can actually go beyond this uh, because we are interested in in remainders. Okay, if the digit if the digit is not here, uh, you cannot consider it part of the number. And so, what you will do is, you can also keep on dividing whichever digit you have with the base. Okay, and then the more you divide, the more bits you will get. Okay, so what we'll do here is that we'll take because how much how much uh, number with which number which will we divide two with in order to get a smaller number than one? So that's where we'll have to multiply a zero with two, and then as a result we'll get one as a remainder. Okay. Uh, so incidentally, if you take this number or take this number or take this number, all are same. Okay, in essence, uh, because we have a leading zero here, the leading zeros do not change the value. Trailing zeros do. Okay, so if we have uh, one zero and zero one are two different numbers. Because we in one we have in in case of one zero we have a trailing zero that will make the num uh, that will that will uh, change the value of one to ten. Okay, if we have a leading zero in case of zero and one, zero one, because the zero is in leading position, it does not change the value of one. Okay, so uh, the number we get is 
0.010101. Okay. So this is the number that we get when we convert decimal 37 into binary. a binary number. Okay. Uh, so if we can, if we want to convert the same number, same decimal number 37 into base 16 or base 8, uh, we'll divide we'll divide this number uh, by 8 or by 16 depends on which ever conversion we want to take. Okay. Uh, so. So as an example, by the way, uh, this is a short description or algorithm, the short description of or algorithm for uh, converting a decimal number into binary number. And here is an example, as you can see here, uh, we, have a, we have a decimal number 125 and we want to convert this number into a binary, binary number. Binary. Okay, so what we do is we start taking LCM with 2. Okay. So we divide 125 with 2 and then we get 62 as a coefficient and 1 as a remainder and then we continue on, continue with this process until we get a 0 as a coefficient. Okay. That's where we, we will stop our process and in the result what we will get here is a binary number. Okay. So if you can see here, they have counted these. They, they, they have included these, uh, the, rem the remainders only, not the coefficients. Okay. So we have truncated, uh, we are not taking the coefficients. Okay. So in case of uh, 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 decimal to octal number, what we do is that we have a decimal number that we want to convert into uh, into octal. So what we'll do is we will start dividing this number by 8. eight. Okay. So when we uh, divide 37 by 8, what we get? 8 for the 32. 8 for the 32 and then we get a 5 remainder. Uh, what do we do now? Okay, so multiply. Yes, sir. No, eight zero zero, and then we'll get a uh, four minus zero is we'll get four as a remainder. Okay, so we have thirty seven of base ten is equivalent to forty five of base eight. Okay. Yes, sir. So as you can see here, we have a number 1,234 uh, of base 10 that we want to convert into, octal. into into an octal number. So what we do here is we start dividing or taking LCM of this number with 8 yes. until until we get a zero, zero coefficient. Yes, okay. So when we divide 1,234 uh, by 8, we get 154 as a coefficient and then 2 as a remainder. We'll continue the same process and divide 154 with 8. Okay. Uh, as a result, we will get 19 as a coefficient yes, sir. and 2 as, a, 2 as a remainder and we will continue with the same. We will divide 19 with 8 and then three okay. uh, okay. we will get 2 as a coefficient and 3 as a remainder and then we will continue further where we get 0 as a coefficient and 2 as a remainder and then that is how and then we'll take these four digits, these four remainders, okay, and write them, write, write them uh, from bottom up, okay, and then we'll get 2,300 and sorry, 2322 um, in octal, okay. In case if we have uh, 37 in decimal and we want to convert it into in, uh, into a hexadecimal number, what do we do here? Divide by 16, Divide. not multiply. Okay, because we are going away from decimal, we'll divide, yes, yes. or we'll take LCM. 
when we are going towards decimal, when we are going towards decimal, we will multiply with the uh, with the power of the of base. Okay, so 16, 16 twoza is 32, and then we have five remainder, and then we'll since we do not have we we haven't reached uh, the coefficient of zero. Uh, we'll continue with the uh, with LCM and then we'll take zero coefficient and then we'll have two as a remainder. Okay, and that would mean that thirty-seven of base ten is how much in base sixteen? This twenty-five. Sorry, twenty-five. Twenty-five in base sixteen. Okay. Yes, sir. So it says the same thing. So we have uh, 1,234 in base 10, and we want to convert the same number into base 16. What do we do? Is we start taking LCM of one, one, two, three, four, with 16. Okay. So the first time we divide one, one thousand, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, with 16, is we get 77 as coefficient, and two as a remainder. And then we'll continue dividing 77 with 16, and we'll get uh, four. Four is the coefficient, and 13, 13 as a, as a remainder. 13 as a remainder. Okay, because it's a two-digit decimal number, and we we want to we want to represent the same value in hexadecimal. What we'll do is we'll take this th we'll take this double-digit decimal number, and take its hexadecimal equivalent. So instead of writing 13 we will write D okay and then we will continue further we will divide 4 with 16 and then we will get 0 uh, as coefficient and 4 is remainder and we, when we write this number how we will write we will write it from bottom up so the so the, de so the hexadecimal number will be 40 42. Okay, 42 of Base 16, as you can see here, yes. the base the base is written as a subscript. Okay. In case of uh, octal to binary conversion, in case of uh, octal to binary conversion, what we'll do is we'll take a we'll take a we'll take an octal number. We'll take an octal number, and then we'll convert each digit of the octal number uh, into a three-digit binary number. Okay. We will take each digit of octal number, octal number and convert each digit into a three digit binary conversion. Okay. So, let us say if we have 37, 37 can be an octal number, yes or no? Yes. yes. Because uh, in octal in octal system we have digits from zero to seven, okay. Uh, this cannot be an octal number. This cannot be an octal number because it it has eight in it. Because it has eight in it. Because there is no eight in octal system, uh, this cannot possibly uh, uh, be a be an octal number. Okay. So if we have an octal number. And we want to convert into a binary number. What we do here? What do we do here? C convert each octal digit into a three-bit equivalent binary representation. So, how many digits are there? Two digits. We have two digits, and as it says that we have to convert each digit, each octal digit, into a three-bit equivalent binary representation. Okay, so what do we he do here is that we take three, and for the moment we have to forget that it's an octal digit. Okay, what we do here is that take three and then um, apply the same procedure that we used in order to convert a uh, in order to convert a decimal number into an into a binary number. So we'll take 
uh, in LCM with 2 we have 2 2 1 is 2 Okay, so when we convert three into uh, when we convert three into a three-digit binary number, when we convert three into a three-digit binary number, we'll get zero one one. Okay, and then we'll convert seven into a binary number. What do we get? When we convert seven into a binary, what do we get? Okay, two threes are six. Two ones are Okay. Okay. So we have, we have, we now have a conversion of three, a three-bit conversion, three-bit binary rep representation of three, and a three-bit binary representation of seven. Okay. And how do we write here? Is that because three is uh, three is in hundredth place, uh, three is in tens place. Uh, we will write the con uh, three's conversion in tens place. Okay, so zero one one, and then we have seven. So we'll now write se uh, seven's conversion. So that's one one one. So the uh, so the binary conversion of thirty seven is thirty seven octal is zero one 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 one. Okay, uh, if you want to make sure, or if you want to recheck this value, what you can do is well if you you may want to convert 37 into decimal first and then convert the decimal number into into binary okay either way you will get the same value okay so here we have 705 of base 8 that uh, that has been converted into a base 2 number so what has been done is uh, we have taken uh, the three-bit binary three-bit binary representation um, of seven, and then we have taken a three-bit uh, binary representation of zero, and then a three-bit binary representation of five. Okay, and so we have we have substituted their conversions in uh, in place of the actual digits. And then for hexadecimal to binary conversions, what do we do? We do the same thing. Same procedure, okay. So let's say if uh, if let's say this is a this is a base sixteen number. Can this be a base sixteen number? Can this be a base sixteen number? Yes, sir. Thirty-seven, because it has uh, because hexadecimal also has seven and three, okay. So this thing says that when we when you are converting a hexadecimal number into a binary number, uh, the base the basic procedure remains the same as it was in uh, octal to binary. But for this conversion, what we do is we take four digit binary representations. We take each digit or each bit of the hexadecimal number, and then we when we convert it into a binary number, we we give it a four bit four bit binary representation, not three, not two. 4 bit binary representation so in case of 3 when when we when we converted in octal we wrote what did we write 0 1 1 but if if, if the same digit is hexadecimal digit how do we represent it okay so you have to you have to give this give the same digit a 4 bit binary representation Okay. Okay. So in case of uh, this number, what do we have? We have because three is first, and then what was the conversion for seven? One one one. So we'll write zero one one one. Okay. As an example, you can see here we have a four-digit, four-digit hexadecimal number, and then what do we have to do with this? We have to convert each hexadecimal digit into a four-digit binary representation. So we'll we'll take one, 
we will take one of hexadecimal and then we will convert it into a four digit binary representation. So, that will be what? That will be what? When we convert one of hexadecimal into a binary, what we will get? 0, 0, 0, 001. 0, 0, 0, 001. Okay. And then what we have next? So, we have, uh, we have 0, so there will be four zeros. And then what do we have next? Ten, ten. 10. How do we represent 10? One zero one zero, and then we have an F that will be 1111. One, one, one. Okay. So, uh, the conversion for this number would be 0001, 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and then 1111. One, one, one. Okay. So, that will be all for today. I um, will be answering if you have any questions. No? That will be all then. Okay. We will we'll meet in the next class. Thank you very much.